Hey everybody, Ranj, your friendly bearded plumber here. I'm doing this video, just a quick little update on my two bags. As you know, I've done an intense video before, but this video is just a quick little update. I wanted to use my Vito Pro Pack TPXL for the next few months. I thought, you know, I've been using my beloved Velocity Rogue 2 for almost six to nine months now. And I also used in between that, in the month of November, uh, my Vito MCT. Then I went back to my Velocity. And I thought, you know what? I love the shape of this bag. And I thought I will, just for this next few months, use this bag as my everyday servicing bag because obviously summer's around the corner and I'll be doing a lot more servicing so I shouldn't need anything more than all this gear to carry out my services. So obviously as an FGA, my Testo 310, two pole voltmeter resistance a continuity tester and just my hand tools, you know, like the spanners and stuff. But as you can see straight away, the first tool that I normally reach for is my spanner because obviously I've got to isolate the gas on the boiler, undo some nut somewhere or another on intergas and actually on all boilers actually, removing the burner from the heat exchanger, you're gonna to have to undo the gas union, which therefore you need your spanner. And as you can see, it's hard for me to reach behind everything else. But nevertheless, I thought, you know what, it's fine. Let's make this work. But I've come to realize after 35 to 45 minutes trying to pack this bag out, I removed everything out of this bag, put it into this bag. And as you know, I've still got my Torx and my socket set. You know, uh, let me show you. So this is a shallow version of the socket set that I have by from Wera, the mini two Zyklop kit. So all this, still needs to go into this bag and I know I've got these pockets here but it's like then everything just like sort of sticks out even if I do get this in there you see on the velocity I've got this big bumper pocket in the front and in here I've got still odds and sods of small little things um, such as a radiator tail key there this is ceramic grease that uh, comes with intergas um, and I obviously have to grease up the bolts and I also use this on almost everywhere where there's heat exchanger is me you know the two metals between the heat exchanger and the burner door meet up and something you get a bit of creaking sounds this is where this stuff shines and stops the, gr uh, stops the noise my Nipex uh, long nose multi no I forgot the number of these uh, Nipex where is it it's here somewhere these are the Nipex, ah, the Nipex 1386-200. These don't fit in the bag either, and yet they fit it in there. Also, these are my stickers um, that I stick on boilers. I've shown you before, but let me show you again. Oh, there they are, so stickers. So these stickers, I haven't got a way to, you know, I can stand them up there, but again, they're just like in the way. Whereas on the velocity bag, it just sits in the side pocket along with my digital manometer, the Testo 510, out of the way. It's funny how this bag is so deceiving that it looks bigger than this bag, but this bag can get all this stuff in there and I can get to everything without having to move too much stuff out of the way. So, you know, a lot of people ask me all the time, can you access all your tools with that bag, with your flu gas analyzer in that bag? And I'm like, yeah, mostly all your tools are accessible. I think because it's stacked higher up, you can get behind other, other tools without obstruction in the way. So what I'm gonna do, just to prove to you all that all this fits in this bag here, I will time lapse it from top above and I will show you that this 
will all this plus that cutter plus all this will fit back in this bag better than how this one's packed out so yeah be right back right guys so i thought i would time lapse it but i'm not going to time lapse it because i want to show you in real time me loading this bag into this one just to prove that all this and more will fit back in this bag all right so first of all let's get out my flu analyzer this is the 310 testo i have two of these just in case one stops working or when it's away from calibration because here in the netherlands they can take forever so that's out of the way just for now just there my trusty little two pole voltage and continuity tester the fluke t130 as you can see there fluke t130 so that's the two big components out of the way and this is as you can see not a lot of hand tools but i just can't get it to work so let's pull this all together and let's so just to if you're also interested in what these are these are my socket set from Weera. So yeah, this kit basically comes with the two ratchets. This one is for the socket set and this one is a quarter inch drive. The kit comes with a maximum, which is a six mil bit. That's the max that it comes with. But I need sometimes for the radiator valves here in this country, an eight mil allen key or sometimes even a 10 mil so these are by we are not we are but we are i know it's a bit rusty need a bit of cleaning but these are from we are and i now have a stubby little 10 mil allen key or an 8 mil allen key to get me out of trouble there you go oh when it goes in 8 mil so this is how i get out of trouble when i need an allen key I prefer these because they're short and stubby, ratchet, less work, just with a flick of a switch on the back, it goes reverse and forward drive. That's that, so just neatly flatten them out, on goes the lid, so that's that. That straight away goes in here, because that's where that sits and the quarter inch sits back in here so just there and then these these socket sets fit into here directly like so there you go click so and now i've got a socket set shallow shank as you can see, it's such a short shank that it can get into tight spaces. So that's my go-to socket set. And to get these to fit in the box, I need to fit them slightly in with each other or into each other to get them to fit like so. So double them up so that they sit inside the box and I can close the box off. Yeah, I know, it's just how I like to do my stuff. I like to recycle, use reuse stuff all the time I don't like to waste sometimes it's a ball like but that will fit like so yeah. okay there you go closed mm, just about yeah closed yeah, it's, it'll do for now it's only because I don't want to cut this video and I want to show it in real time so those go in there and then this sits back in here so those two ratchets sit there then I'm gonna start on this side, my long stuff. So I've got a long 200 mil blade, 200 mil length there, plus the handle, uh, size five and a half mil flathead. And my telescopic mirror, oh, there I am, just so you can see, my, my nostrils, apologies for that. But yep, there's my mirror. I think I've had this for years. So these stand up on the side just like so and my nipex multi-cutter that i was talking about that can't i can't find a house 
a place to house this inside the bag. That just stands up on the side there like so. Obviously once it's all in place, it does stay in, in situ. My Cobras. Two set of Cobras. These are the normal Cobra, not, so you've all seen that I've bought a slim version. But to be honest, after using the slim version, I'm going to be very honest with you, you can't beat these. These are the original Cobras and these are by far more superior than the other ones. I love the fact that the opening on this is a lot more. There's so much more opening compared to the other ones that I've got. And also, I just feel that these just lock into place quicker. I don't know. I know they shouldn't, but they just do. Maybe because I'm used to using these a lot more. So these are my Cobras and I've got the little baby version. So these are the 180 and these are the 250. So two Cobras in my bag. These basically stand up on the side. Again, not in not in a pocket, but just stands up on the side. It's just that it works for me. And these ones go into one of the pockets, just like so, forward facing. Dedicated four mil Allen key um for pump heads that's really where it's there what it's there for and a few of the bosch boilers i've come across have the minimum minimum or the maximum i can't remember i think it's a maximum uh to adjust the gas combustion you need a formal allen key so that's that that also stands up on the side like so and now you see that it's already starting to stay in place oh and i got just what else have i got in the bottom there just uh cable tie I'll put that away to the side for now then we have my two go-to spanners the Bacos 9029s and these are the T version I think thin slim God knows what they mean but as you can see they're slightly different to these these two basically sit on top of each other in this pocket here was it that pocket or was it this one I think it was this one next one no, it was definitely this one. Yes, now I remember. That's so. Because in the pocket next to it goes my wire brush for electrodes and heat exchangers. I do brush down Intergas heat exchangers with this. And a toothbrush for the aluminium heat exchangers that you're not supposed to put a steel brush down. Such as the Ramia Kalanta, Tezera, um even the eco fits surveillance eco fits you, they say just flush it with water but sometimes it's just nice to get in there with a toothbrush a soft brush and just wipe it all down so they go in the one next to the spanners like so my this is a bbb cycling so it's basically a bicycle torque wrench set to six newton meters here let me show you uh six there you go six newton meters um with a 10 mil socket on it this socket is dedicated for valence almost every Gianni heat exchanger I think I said it correctly Gianni heat exchanger like the one that's in the Valen Ecotex Ramia Avanta the Bosch have them as well anywhere that has the round cylindrical heat exchanger they all have a 10 mil not holding the burner to the heat exchanger. Um, Valent, obviously, because Valent, I'm a Valent fanboy. Valent want their nuts tightened up to six newton meters. Ramia Avanta says seven, but because six and seven is so close to each other, that's totally fine. The Bosch is also six newton meters, so therefore, one torque wrench does it all for me. I do have the bigger Wera one, the A5, I believe it is, in the van for the intergas bolts. But I'm gonna be honest, I don't always use the intergas ones. Yeah, I'm not gonna lie. There's way too many bolts to flip and tighten off that boiler. So that stands up it's like that, upside down, out of the way. Then, what do we have? See, so I'm actually missing a screwdriver from this bag, I couldn't fit it in. Oh no, sorry, I lie. Here it is, it's on the side. So I carry a dedicated 3.5 and a dedicated 4mm flathead wear a screwdriver. Um, just because sometimes when you've got to get to... The 4mm really only comes into play when I'm working on a gas valve to do the tightness test or the inlet working pressure. Um, sometimes they're a bit stiff and a 4mm 
is exactly the right screw flathead to get in there to open it so you don't shear the screw head otherwise my go-to size normally is a 3.5 because it obviously the best size for terminal as a terminal drive screwdriver whatever you call it these sit basically on the side over here that's that done no nope, that's a lie I don't keep them there I keep them on this side it was only an hour ago that I took them out and I've already forgotten where I keep everything so I believe they sit there like that mirror out the way screwdriver and that out the way so as you can see this bag is still nowhere near full as this one was and I've got all the tools almost in there um, boss white I basically can't get hold of this tub anymore so what I do I have this one and I also have the metal 200 gram container and I just buy the 400 grams and I always transfer it into this just because this one fits nicely in the corner of my bag there and lubricant silicone lubricant uh, grease for all your o-rings I know I have my socket set but I always keep with me dedicated 8mm and 10mm flexi head spanners these come in really useful at times the 8mm I have to use quite a bit when you have to remove the intergas fan off the burner door it's an 8mm nut and uh, yeah that's where this comes in handy so these sit back there and sometimes when you're tightening up radiators and stuff um, the bolts are always 13mm and even the bolts that come with the in valence when you screw the wall plate to the wall that's a 13mm and again it's got 10mm on this side so I like this uh, we're a joker I like the shape and plus it's um, just yeah I love Weera so I like this spanner that also sits in there and this is basically a quarter inch hexagon bit holder this one it can get hard to get out so yeah so this basically I use for setting up gas valves this one is a Torx 15 because intergas gas valves are adjusted with a Torx 15 and I'm not an intergas fanboy but intergas is like because it's the Dutch boiler it's like one of the go-to boilers in this country so hence why I've got that dedicated ready there and because the other boiler that's Dutch which is a Ramia and the Ramia Avanta the Ramia yeah the Ramia Avanta has a 2 mil hex allen key for the minimum burner pressure or the burner you know uh, low combustion setting to adjust that so that's why these are dedicated set like this in my bag that sits in there and then we have everybody needs to have a fluke or some sort of non-contact voltage detector and this one is a magnetic field detector for pumps just to prove that pump is spinning um, I don't use it much but it does come in useful to just to see if the pump is actually spinning or not they sit in there like so then we have oh I've had this for donkey years since I was newbie to the heating industry um, this is a TPI digital thermometer it's the only TPI product I've ever owned and it's not failed I've changed batteries in it once only and yeah this is uh, just to check your hot water temperatures that sits back there so you see still all going well my Nipex long nose bent pliers I yeah I can't live without these I the more I've the more I realize how useful a bent long nose pliers is it's for pulling out all those awkward little clips holding in water pressure sensors um, other you know I've used it in many places I even like to actually use the tips 
push it into the auto air vent, um, you know the little ones that sit above the pump on a Valent or on a Bosch, um, push it in a pop and it pops out. So yeah, that comes in useful there. That sits on the side like so. So far so good. Um, my go-to posi drive is basically the Wera 816RA. It's a ratchet, so click it there and there. You do get the ones that pop up and all that sort of stuff. I just went for the dedicated ratchet screwdriver head. Um, and these are just some miscellaneous, I don't know, off Amazon, some posi drive screwdriver bits. I just like the fact that this one had some blue sheathing on it. But just this weekend, I was doing some work at home and I punctured the plasterboard to fit the plasterboard core screws uh, using just the end of it and push the plastic sheathing back a little. But yeah, it does a job, doesn't matter. That just stands on the side there, back there. That's my bag so far, so good. As you can see, I can still get to everything without removing anything. I need to get the posi drive, it's on the top. I need to get to the long nose pliers, it's there. My cobras are on the side. Everything slides out. And then, Stanley blade. As you know, these are my go-to Stanley blades. I think I've got about a dozen of these silver line ones. They're cheap as chips. And I just like the fact that by folding it, it's compact and it um, you know, protects you. You don't need to worry about sliding it back and forward. That just sits up there. This little pouch has a lot of important stuff in it. It did until that one took a drop. Okay, so just to let you all know what these are. These are just quarter inch bits. Let me, how am I gonna show it? Let's show it this way. So I've got a dedicated three mil. This three mil 99% of the time is used for undoing ignition electrodes on intergas boilers. Then I've got another Philips. This is the Philips one. Posi 1 or yeah Philips no Philips 2 I should have a Philips 1 here it is there it is so Philips 1 um, these are this size is useful for all the small little screws you get in your Honeywell T6 thermostats the Valent V smart thermostats they all need a W not a W a Posi or a Philips 1 and then I've got a couple of extra Posi 2s a little three mil just in case I need to get somewhere tight into a tight little terminal a three mil dedicated three mil with a 3.5 bone fit so all these just go up here as well a four mil drill bit just for drilling something or another I always keep that in the bag also on the side I keep a 10 mil HSS drill bit this is because here in Amsterdam or in Holland, most of our boilers, 95% of the boilers are twin flue systems. And because they are twin flue systems, I can actually physically drill into the flue pipe to actually do a gas analysis, which is fantastic because not all boilers, only the newer ones all have a test point. Whereas the Intergas HR, the older version, didn't actually have a dedicated test point. So you can drill into that to do a test analysis. I love that, so that stays up here. Tucked out the way, because it's not something I need every on every job. And then this setup is for this ratchet. This is the way I remove the cumbersome nine to 12 bolts that hold the blooming burner door on an Intergas. It was like this until recently and I've just got fed up that um, because I do probably six to eight no let me recount I probably do about 20 intergas boil work on 20 intergas boilers a week um, and undoing those bolts with the ratchet is all good but you know I'm getting fed up so now because I carry my Black & Decker drill the Evo multi Evo um, it acts as an air pump for expansion vessels, pumping up expansion vessels, and it has a drill head. So I just pop this out from here like so, 
put it into the drill, undo the bolts, service the boiler, do what I gotta do, and then use the drill again, tighten all the bolts just enough till I get to the end, and I will probably use this, but if it's if I feel like it, which is most of the time, I will use the Weira A5 ratchet set to number 11 Torx because that's what they say between 10 to 12 but I'm gonna be honest with you when you've been doing it for so many years you know how tight the door should be on an intergas but because the valence and the Rumia Avantas because they've got four bolts only or four nuts holding the burner door I prefer to use a dedicated torque wrench on them because I want to make sure that it's 100% right. So that pops off like so. That slides in there and that sits up there as well. So far that's all good. Then this ratchet is a Sealy tool, but I think it's with Premier on it, but it is by Sealy Tools. Um, so this is a 5mm flat and a 4mm flat and it pops out the side like so um, and I can you know, interchange it. 99% of the time it's a 4mm that's needed and because the Ecotex, as much as I love them, as you all know I do love the Ecotech, no boiler will ever beat that, um, the gas valves on the side. So you want to do the inlet pressure, it's right at the back, sometimes you only got that much space, you can't get a screwdriver in it. That's where this comes in, you know, slide it in and undo the burner pressure or inlet pressure point. Um, and yeah, and then I obviously swap it back over and then hand tighten it and then LDF the, uh, the screw. So that's how I get to my valent test points. And that just slides in there. So I'll do a different view in a minute once this is all packed up. So far, as you can see, still almost every tool is accessible without getting something else out. What do I have in here? This is a broken 6mm Weira Allen key. I shave the end off and I use it as enter punch or when I need to knock something out. This works for me. I keep a file, not for my nails really, but you could do it. Yeah, it works. But obviously for filing ignition electrodes, giving them a proper clean at times when they're a bit more dirty than usual. That just slides in there. Or there, it can go there, there you go. Uh, cheap as chips, just a, some Chinese brand. I don't know, they all, they all look the bloody same with some different name written there. But a uh, digital pressure gauge for checking expansion vessels. That sits in there. Um, and yeah, that is really it. This is just another six mil long shaft that I don't need. I, I don't need that. That can stay in there. That's just a cable tie. Oh, actually I have to buy something else. My lovely light by Unilight. This is the IL375R. It's magnetic. There's these two points here. It's magnetic. It's magnetic on the base there as well, so you can stick it to things. Um, I can show you if you want. That's, nope, that's not magnetic. Oh, yeah. That's something. What I love about another thing I really love about the velocity is that that is magnetic. Whereas on the Vito, this is not magnetic. So that in itself is just an advantage if you want to just stick your light on it while you're working and turn it on there you go you have light whilst you're working again I'm not in any way sponsored by Velocity I do not get paid to say what I say I just say it because as you all know I'm one that almost suffers from verbal diarrhea and I love speaking but that sits in the corner there. Again, it works. Permanent marker on the side. That just sits on the side as well with the stickers. 
uh, stickers go on the side with my digital manometer Testo 510 and what I can actually also show you is that behind the stickers over here there's a little pocket that's elasticated and in there I keep Schrader cores for the expansion vessels nowhere to keep additional little things in the veto again another point to velocity so that's that done the big compartment is almost done so now what I do is I get my multi my electrical tester stand it upside down tuck it out the way like so something else that was missing from the bag well it, this is a comb that I bought it's basically broken there's gonna be a bit there but the comb is used for heat exchangers it's actually by Bosch or Badurus the German name for it is for their heat exchangers but I use this on intergases because Intergas are so annoying to clean and this really speeds the process up that just drops at the bottom and my FGA so the way I get this in is I get it in upside down because the tube doesn't come away I put it in upside down like so give the cave the tube a few twists as you can see slide the probe behind and there you go done and that sits there this little screwdriver goes in here and what else this PTFE was on this bag here on the side like so so, just to show you, that closes, oh, and gloves, I've become very religious now to wear gloves whilst I'm working, they just tuck up there, on the back, I have a little bike pump, just for when my drill dies on me and I can't be bothered to go back down to get a battery I'll just use this, I'll just pump, pull up, put your foot there and pump, shh, job done and the Regan Mini REGU33 the Mini Regan Premier 30 that goes in the back here and some cable ties in the back that's how this bag is set up and this front pocket here basically like I said this is grease ceramic grease that I apply between the heat exchanger and the burner door to prevent the creaking sounds you get when the heat is applied to the heat exchanger and expansion occurs that prevents that another mint box a few fiber washers quarter inch a half inch and three quarter inch and these are carbon gaskets for ignition electrodes for Rumia Avantas and Bosch some Bosch have this as well the pro line I think or an effort pro line keep them there the valent ones are all in the van a multi radiator tail key you know again don't know where to put it in this bag this just sits in here uh, some fuses and electrical connectors you know emery emery paper strip whatever you call it for cleaning bit of pipe and stuff um, aluminium heat tape 
that's aluminium heat tape for when you drill holes in flues you can just put that on top and seal it off an iPhone charger cable and a few other small little things which I basically couldn't get in this bag and that is a tool would you believe it or not for removing the Honeywell cartridges out of diverter valves um, so I keep that in my bag as well at all times even though you get one of these with every cartridge you replace and you'll see that quite simply oh, and I'll put that in there as well some more cable ties done now you see how much more I can get into this bag and it works and the only thing missing the only one thing missing from this bag right now is clipped on the side here is my uni light the SLR 1000 that sits on the side here and that's the only thing missing from my daily carry bag and yeah like I said it's just perfect in every way let me show you this view so that's it like so and there you go so if you wanted to get to your stuff you know it's all there move that out of the way and it's all there accessible um I'm not gonna lie but you know obviously you've got to move a few things out of the way as well especially the fga probe it needs to be moved out of the way to access everything behind it but the fact that it's got smaller pockets that i can use especially the bumper on the front and the bumper on the side these pockets alone are invaluable to me and yeah then it's got a pocket in the front here where i keep stickers and obviously you all who work on the Baxi range the little Baxi little heat only boilers um, you probably recognize these silly fault codes flashing blimmin lights uh, only here the Ramia Ramia Tezera um, is a combi version so it's a bit more annoying because we get them everywhere in Amsterdam so I and I can't remember every single and I can't remember every single um flashing color code what it means the way I can with valence F codes and S codes and D codes I know them all off by heart but these Ramia ones I always need to refer to them what else is in there yeah just some washers and stuff so you know more pockets I just think there's more pockets with this bag um, I genuinely love this bag and uh, it's a shame it is a shame because I wanted to use the Vito bag this summer just thinking I could but unfortunately I obviously can't so there you have it guys um, my go-to bag is the Velocity Rogue 2 it's perfect in every way and just now that it's actually standing upright there you go that is how it is set up and yeah so I don't know if what else I could say in case you are after a bag that is compact and does everything that you need look no further for me it has to be the velocity I know Vito have taken out the TP XXL but that doesn't solve my issues because it's got the extra pockets on the sides but those pockets are way too big and the bag just becomes overall much bigger than this bag so yeah I don't think I'd be changing my bag anytime soon the only thing I can look forward to is when there's a uni light version of this bag so the one hopefully which will have a light here somewhere that's the only thing I'm waiting for otherwise yeah I don't think I'll be going for a new bag because this bag for me does everything seriously it does everything for me and I'm sure it will help you all out as well so yeah if you found this video useful please give me a thumbs up like, share, subscribe, comment, let me know what you think and if your opinion differs to mine. And um, I look forward to seeing you all in the next video. Live long and prosper guys and girls. And until next time, over and out.